Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known. Unto all men the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, are just, are pure, are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were, ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am therewith, to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound everywhere, and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all, and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. This is a command of balance. It's a very difficult thing in the modern world that has fallen into this trap of black and white thinking. Anyone who speaks to moderation is seen as a coward by usually both sides because you're either with that camp or you're with this camp. Let your moderation be known unto all men. It's reinforced in the Bible. It says, Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. That's Proverbs 23. But yet also in Timothy, it says, No longer drink water exclusively, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. See, this is the idea of moderation. And there are too many right now out in the secular world that are pulling people out of the religious world into their trap that preaches against moderation. That is a hallmark of the secular society. Self-pity is spiritual suicide. 
It is an indefensible self-mutilation of the soul. See, those in the secular society would tell you there's no such thing as a soul. You are just a little puddle of gloop that a uh, lightning bolt hit so many millions and billions of years ago, and that's what you are. And that's all you're authorized to believe. A comfort zone will never be the path to fulfilling your true destiny. And we all know, we all know that growth comes from pain. Growth always comes from pain. Nicole Arbor did a really great piece on how you're never going to get the testimony without the test recently over on her Instagram. You're never going to get the testimony without the test. And how does one have a test if one isn't challenged? You have to have this balance to understand this. Understand that not all things are evil. Not all things that are used for evil necessarily have to be used for evil. Personal story to reiterate this point. When I was a child, many years ago, my grandparents on my mother's side came into a little bit of money and they purchased a piece of property and they built a pretty nice house. But there was a lot of empty scrub land on the property and there was a woods. So my grandfather decided to dig a pond. There were a lot of us grandkids at least a dozen. And so he thought it would be a good investment to make in the property. So he dug it out and water filled in and he stocked it with fish. And it was a wonderful, wonderful blessing to all of us. It was a small pond. It wasn't very big. It wasn't very deep. But one of the great joys was he had put these fish in there, but it was going to take some time for them to grow. And this is a representation of what he had put in there. There were some gills and some catfish. You know, your basic, usual suspects. Now, one of the greatest, most fun things ever, especially for us uh, young boys at the time, was to go out with Grandpa and watch him feed the fish because you could take a handful of this Um, fish meal, these little pellets, toss it out over the surface of the water, usually in the evenings, and it would just look like a hot tub. So many would surface and eat. It was really, really an incredible thing to see. But there was a problem that we didn't see as youth. You see, there wasn't balance. Yes, there were bass and bluegills and catfish, but the bass weren't growing very big, and There were bluegills everywhere, and it was almost impossible to get a bait to the bottom without the bluegills completely destroying it before it got to the catfish. So for a while, all you could do is catch bluegills. Occasionally, a very small bass like this. Now, ecosystems require balance. They require a mix of things, and sometimes that mix doesn't um, come easily. A couple years after that pond was dug, we were hit with an incredibly wet season. And floods came. And the sides got washed in, and it was just a muddy mess for a long time. These are actual pictures from that time. This is way back in the 70s. But a funny thing happened a couple of years later after nature had a chance to balance things. All of a sudden, the bass started getting larger. You couldn't throw a bait out there and literally have it be hit immediately like you could before. A balance had been achieved. Nature had showed that moderation was the key. 
It wasn't the pond it was before. It didn't look as good, but when nature finally had a chance to be left to its own devices, it became a wonderful place to go fish. You could go catch a catfish, catch a bass. There were some sunnies, bluegills. I think after a few years, some people had even tossed in a couple of perch, a couple of crappies. But balance. Balance was the key. Now, you go back all the way to this part right here, and you think, well, wait a minute. It's so much fun, and it's such a blessing, and it feels so good to go uh, toss all this fish meal in and watch all these fish surface. You would think that would be the goal, right? Well, it was fun for its time, and it was enjoyable for that time, but it wasn't balance. And that's the real key of this video. Sometimes things that you like and enjoy and feel good about, they're not balance. And they're not right. There needs to be a balance, and the Bible preaches this. We have to have a certain balance. I always kind of wonder what would have been the result back then had there been the internet. I found this and I thought it was hilarious and I had to share it. Those of you who are fishermen will probably already be laughing having read part of it. The bluegill fish is one of the most dangerous fish in North America. The bluegill is related to the deadly piranha, which is responsible for 20,000 deaths per year. When the bluegill are feeding in a school, they can completely dismantle a human body. In less than 15 minutes, bluegills are responsible for over 500 deaths in the United States every summer. I guarantee had there been the internet back in the 70s and 80s, this would have made the rounds and there would have been no swimming in any of the ponds or lakes in the Midwest. It's just hilarious. I mean, it's it's an entirely hilarious thing to see because anybody knows that the bluegills are harmless. They're totally harmless. I don't care how many are in a pond. I don't care how hungry they are. You're fine. But this would have made the rounds. I guarantee it. This would have made the grounds. There would have been people on YouTube talking about it and relating stories of, you know, how they had lost loved ones to the uh, ferocious hordes of bluegills unfed in the summertime in Michigan or Ohio or wherever. So, anyway, I wanted to share this today. Moderation, guys. Moderation. If anyone is pushing you to an area of not being moderate, an area of not using wisdom or w using good judgment, red flags need to go up. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys tonight on Twitch.